guys so that was my dad's haircut hope you guys enjoyed it that was the first haircut i've done in i think well over a month the last time i cut was my little brother just before he moved out to north carolina i believe that was like around christmas time yeah that's the first time i've cut i haven't i haven't done anything haircut related since if i have to be honest it wasn't as bad as i thought definitely there was a little bit of a learning curve getting adjusted um so like holding the scissors a couple times where like i just kind of made like awkward little like errors here and there scissor work was my biggest flaw uh, for a while really bothered me really took it upon myself to learn from people as well as just learn on my own how to how to get better and through repetition and just trying to research and, and learn more find like it's not really the scissor work that that bothers me so much it's more the clipper in the in the in the liner work that that is a little bit awkward through the whole process it was definitely the clipper and the liner work that kind of like threw me off the most scissor work was a little bit like shaky at the beginning especially because i was using those scissors I never used before by the way like looking back on it like those were really dope scissors i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna actually order a bulk of them to start reselling them because you know for the value and what you get and i know Barbers are always looking for a pair of scissors. There's always a new barber coming in the game, needing that first pair of scissors. Those are, are really dope for a spare. I wish I had those as my first pair of scissors. My first pair of scissors were nothing in comparison to those. They didn't fit my hand. They couldn't cut nice, like weren't good scissors. These are very, very, very good scissors. If you're a professional, if you're a beginner, you didn't get a chance to really do anything other than like point and like texturize cutting. For the most part, they worked really, really well. It's very nerve wracking just cutting my dad. Not that I have a problem cutting my dad or anything. I've cut him once before. My dad has a very interesting texture of hair. It's brown, but it's like curly, but it's like kind of, kind of fine. You have to attack it in a certain way. He doesn't really like to get anything crazy. That's just who he is. That's how he's always been. He just wants a scissor cut. That's what it is. Sorry if it wasn't like the most captivating haircut. Also sorry if the footage was a little dark. I had a little bit of technical issues just before. A little bit of a learning curve because I have like this new camera. I, I kind of know how to work but I don't fully know how to work. We kind of compromised and improvised. But I think the footage is, you know, it's still kind of crazy to see. A bit nerve-wracking just filming in front of my parents. Like, granted, my parents are really easy going. They're really chills and everything. I guess you would just want to do them proud. I know they're critiquing the work. They're filmmakers themselves in a way, and they've been fans of films for a while. It made me really happy just to let my uh, dad be a part of them and just put them on there for you guys. Do a little trim for him. That's all he really wanted. He just wanted a little cleanup. He doesn't really come into the city very often. I usually only see him like once or twice, and that's it. thought that was really dope. What we're gonna do now is finally gonna cut my grandmother's hair. Considering I just got the experience last night with cutting my dad's hair, I feel a little bit more confident going into this haircut. Only issue I felt like I had with my dad's hair just wetting it in the beginning. For some reason, like I was having an issue getting the hair evenly wet. I had to keep re-wetting the hair, keep recutting it. When the hair is not completely wet, you're gonna get an uneven cut. The lighting played a little bit of an issue, but with the headlamp, it wasn't too bad. I didn't use the razor on him. He's not getting a crazy cut. I'm sure I could have just to clean up around the stubble with the trimmer. It's just a very simple kind of guy. I just didn't really feel like it was necessary. I'm trying to keep it as natural as possible. We were really just trying to get him in and out. It's already like really late. Uh, we were all pretty tired. Really look forward to just showing you uh, my grandmother's haircut. It's gonna be just another scissor haircut. So unless Zach lets me cut his hair, all the haircuts you're gonna see for my family, who are the only people I can cut during lockdown, it's just gonna be scissor haircuts. That's just what it is. My other little brother Devin just moved to North Carolina. So, and he just got a cut before leaving. Zach and Devin are my only two guinea pigs that I could use during this whole process. Um, but one of them's gone. We'll see. I, I, I don't imagine Zach will need one. If he does, you know, I'd love to film it. What we're gonna do with my grandmother, take an inch or two off. It's pretty much just gonna be like a trim all around. A little bit of layering, a little bit of texturing. Keep it simple. I hope you guys enjoy the footage. I hope you guys are enjoying this footage. That's pretty much it, you know, off-grid barbering.
So yeah guys, that's the cut. I finally did it. We finally cut my grandmother's hair. I'm so sorry. The footage at the end got a little bit blurry and a little bit dark. It started getting dark outside. I couldn't really figure out like with my camera how to improve the lighting. I know it's not really good quality. I gotta be honest with you guys. I was really nervous cutting her hair. I cut it once before. I don't know what it was. I was just really nervous doing it. Doing women's hair isn't my forte. I do know how to cut with scissors. Just, it's been so long. I haven't cut in forever. Ever. You know, like clean sectioning, elevation, and tension, all of those things. It was a lot. It was a little overwhelming at a couple points, I'll be honest with you. We got through it. My grandmother didn't want anything crazy, just wanted like an inch, an inch and a half off everywhere. And just kind of like, you know, fine tune like the, the neck area and the sideburns. She doesn't really want anything crazy. That was what she wanted. That's what we we're gonna give her. I don't have a problem with doing more natural style haircuts, ones that aren't my style per se. Back when I used to cut, it used to be one of those things where you take a day off, it felt like you took two days off. One of the things that I was grateful for when Toronto shut down but my uptown Richmond Hill shop was still open was I gotta kind of adapt to the fact that I wasn't working every day. It required me to become more dependable on my skill set. If I wasn't cutting every single day, I could still perform and still do really good. I guess it's just one of those things when you haven't generally cut or you're not in that mind state, it's hard to like just go back and just kill it. It's like a ball player coming back from injury. They average 30 points. Do you expect them to put 30 points up from their first game coming back? Probably not. Granted, I've really been trying to keep myself orientated around the whole barbering. Watching a lot of Instagram, YouTube videos, just on like cutting hair, really basic stuff. I really hope you enjoy that. Still have my mom to cut. I don't know if we're gonna do that. Uh, or when we're gonna do that really I'm hoping sooner than later after that I, I really don't know when I'll cut again just to show you my real skill set you know different things I can do I hope you guys enjoyed the little snippets that you got regardless all right guys without further ado we are gonna start part one of Christmas hat collection I'd like to call it the cat collection what I kind of did was I broke it up into four categories I have Major League Baseball NFL NHL NBA, then I just have like local branding. So I guess five categories, five categories, my bad. <laughs> I'm just gonna give you the rundown, each one of the hats, why I like it, if there's like a story or anything affiliated with it. Start out with NBA. Everybody that knows me just knows that basketball is my favorite sport. Seems obvious. Right off the bat, we got the Indiana Pacers with the Pacers original colorway. Mitchell and Ness uh, joint snapback. I don't really think I need to say a lot. The colorway is really just what kind of pops for me. I really, really like navy. As well as the fact that the hat really just kind of looks like a 90s kind of throwback almost or 80s retro kind of snapback. The crazy thing about this is I actually got this from the Mitchell and Ness store in Philadelphia. It was one of my first stops, I believe, in my last trip there back in 2019. I was just rummaging through their jerseys and their snapbacks because I knew that there was something I would want to get something from there. I knew I'd have an opportunity to go back and visit uh, when I was leaving. This hat always kind of resonated in my mind, so I made it a point to go back and get it. Sure enough, it was still there. Really happy I, I, I caught it. I think this is one of the most eye-grabbing hats out that I have in my collection. Next one up, you already know I had to include a championship collection, especially with us bringing home the chip back in 2019. Feels like yesterday. I actually got like a bunch of championship way hats when the Raptors won the chip. Collection purposes as well as just kind of nostalgia. I feel like this stuff is going to retain value in the years to come. Really, really like this one. I really wanted to put this one in the collection because much like the, the Pacers, I really feel like this kind of has like a more timeless kind of look. Almost kind of looks like championship hats that you would see like something like the Chicago Bulls winning in like the 90s. I feel like for the years to come this is going to age very very well. Snapback New Era. Not a big fan of New Era snapbacks. It was a big point to just get the hat. Championship memorabilia. Not really the brand. I didn't really care about that. Really happy to have it in my collection. 
Next up, we have the original throwback Vancouver Grizzlies. What makes this hat really, really unique, if you notice the fit is a retro fit. This is the exact fit that you would get if you were to buy a snapback in the 90s or 80s. It's not Mitchell and S branded, it's not New Era, Adidas branded. Authentic, still in mint quality, still has the NBA logo. The stitching is premium on the hat. I don't remember what year it was. I kind of had a collection binge going on just before I got into cutting. I was looking for certain hats, trying to collect certain hats, and this was on the top of my list. It was really hard to find. I don't remember exactly where I went to get this, but I do remember I did travel a little bit of a distance, maybe an hour to two hours just to get this hat. It was like a day's mission just to get this. I'm actually very surprised that it held up in as good of quality that it has, considering how long I've had it for. I feel like if you're a Canadian NBA fan, considering that the Vancouver Grizzlies is no longer an existing franchise, it's almost a necessity to get. love to get like an updated one. Believe it or not, that same new era store that, that I got this at had a bunch of these more premium fit, all black, and more my fit, and the logo was blown up a lot more, and I kind of wish I got one of those, kind of on a budget, so. Maybe I'll add that to the collection. We'll see. Next up, we're gonna go with NFL. A little different. I only have two here. I actually got them both at the same event. Tommy, that's in this vlog, actually had a, a pop-up event that he was vendoring at called, I believe it was called Deadstock Depot. They do it three times a year, and this one was in the summertime. He told me to come pull up really near at the shop that I was working at at the time, and I had a break. Went to go just say what up to him. Happened to found these two gems. Well, there, were th there was actually three. I'm a big 49ers fan, mainly because I just love the city of San Francisco. When I seen this, oh my god, I knew I needed this. I only had one other 49ers cap. Love it, but it's very neutral, it's very straight to the point. I love throwback 90s looking gear, you know? I love throwback 90s looking gear. Love the graphic pattern of this, the color, it really pops. Gray underbrim, big thing for gray and green underbrims. A starter brand, got the, uh, the the pro line NFL, really, really dope. I think I got this for $10. I'm not kidding you, the guy gave it to me for $10. Super grateful that this caught my eye. Still in very premium condition. There's a little, little thing there, but other than that, it's, I love this hat so much. Such an iconic hat. Next up, I know they just got kicked out, but it's all good. I just think it's a really dope hat. And plus, you know, it's the city next door. You gotta, you gotta rep it to a degree. You know, your neighbors, Buffalo Bills. Once again, another hat in pretty much like near perfect condition. A true authentic, it is a retro. But look at that stitch, that brim, green under brim. Not really sure what brand this is. You can tell that's, that's authentic right there. That's authentic right there, boy. I really love the, the fit of these. They have a 90s fit to them, which is really dope. They really pop out. These are the kind of hats that I really like. And you can tell, like, these are the kind of hats, if you take care of them, they will stand the test of time. Shout out Deadstock Depot. When all of this pandemic stuff is over, they end up doing, like, an event. I would love to go to one and maybe vlog on that, too. I have other football hats, but I didn't have time to put another one in, considering I have so many others. So we're just going to go move on to, uh, to hockey. Hockey, I don't really have a lot of hats these are pretty much the only few that i have nonetheless i still do think they have some iconic uh, value to them so first one up new era chicago retro print snapback just seen this in a new era store or a lids need this always been a big fan of the logo i loved how they had this one on the side felt like you know the print was just super clutch with the whole black chicago blackhawks you got the green underbrim. The fit of the hat is actually pretty good. Actually a really nice fit hat. Worn this hat for the years and kind of grew off of it. I kind of grew out of it. Style wasn't really me, but to be honest, I was trying to sell this at one point. I don't think I'm going to sell this joint. I think this is really clean, crisp joint. I think I just got to keep this for me, to be honest. This is a bigger hat, a bigger kind of sphere, which is perfect for it right now. There's so much hair and everything, so... I love this hat. I want to say I got it in New York, but I'm not for certain if I did. Could have been a Buffalo trip or somewhere else. I definitely got this on a trip somewhere in the States. Wanted like an all red joint. I didn't have one that I really felt like popped out. I got family in New York. It's a big deal for me to have a couple cops, New York affiliated. A lot of people got the Yankees, the Mets. I just thought like this whole old school New York Rangers really, really spoke volumes. Green underbrim, you know how we do. Mitchell and Ness. 
joint affiliation with Vintage Hockey. I don't remember this being a very expensive hat, to be honest. I think it might have been like maybe 25, maybe 30. Pretty decently priced hat, considering this is more of a vintage hat. I don't wear it a lot, but when I do, it pops out. A lot of people usually notice it, so. This is a gem. One of my personal favorites. Most treasured hats that I own. This one has a little bit more of a story behind it. Kind of goes in the affiliation with this one. You remember I told you that, you know, I did a, a trip somewhere. Get this joint. I want to say it was like 30, but I think it was closer to like 40. The same story with this next cap I'm about to show you. Mighty Ducks Anaheim. Original retro snapback. It's an NHL logo. Logo branded. Not even, it's not... They don't got no other branding, no other anything. Green underbrim, retro fit, snapback. I found a buyer on Kijiji back in the day, trying to sell it. I made a trip out to Oakville to get this. I think it was like for 40 to $50. And where I would look for it, I couldn't find the exact one I wanted. But this was the exact one. Used to wear it a lot, considering how good of quality it is, but you can't really find them. I don't really wear it a lot anymore. I want to retain its its quality. The reason this is one of my favorite and most treasured hats, Mighty Ducks was one of the first sports teams, the first logos that spoke to me as a child, as a kid, you know, growing up, you know, I was a big fan of the Mighty Ducks movies, the cartoons, the actual ones. I had a lot of retro hand-me-down gears from my cousins and stuff and family that was Mighty Ducks, so the logo always really spoke to me. I knew I wanted to get one of these. I knew I could, I knew I had to. It was probably a little bit out of budget at the time for me, but looking back now, I'm very happy that I spent the money that I did on it. We're gonna do Major League Baseball. First one, I guess there's kind of a story behind it. Not really. Ever since Kit Cuddy days, full like Man on the Moon, really like taking off. I was really into the whole Cleveland Indians and gray pullover hoodie, you know, frame look. Really into that. It was an issue of finding Cleveland Indians cap. Couldn't find that ish out here for some reason it was like the toughest thing for some reason fitted one day i was able to find actually still have it and this is it it's a fitted a little beat up you can tell a couple of stains and stuff definitely seen some days i've definitely worn this hat a hell of a lot i wore the hell out of this hat the logo's still pretty clean and everything I don't know, it never did it for me, especially when I got more into getting like snapbacks. Like, I started drifting away from fitteds. I didn't, it didn't do it the same justice. Kind of grew wary of this particular cap. Still wanted that same kind of look and that same kind of flair. A couple years ago, I started hustling blank tees and selling them out of my shops. Like, you know, like one for 10, three for 20, white and black t-shirts. Place that I would go and collect them, they would sell like other things like fitteds and, and ish. Sure enough, they had a whole rack of these same fitted, dramatically cheaper. I think they're only like 20 bucks. I paid like 40, 45 for this and these were out. Fitteds were like the thing, you know? Yeah, they, you know, since then it had been so long and these things were on discount, I guess they were trying to get rid of them. And I was so tempted to get one, but something told me like, dude, it's no different than the fitted you have at home. Why are you gonna get it? Part of me that really wanted one just cause I'm a hat collector, you know? I love doubling up on the hats that I love the most. Couldn't do it. Always thought about it. About a year or something ago, I did an online bulk order from 47 brand. After about two hours of looking, I found her. The new and approved Cleveland Indian snapback, as opposed to my original fitted. Now, I don't know if the light's gonna pick it up. Snapback, the logo is a little bit enlarged. The navy is slightly darker. You got a gray underbrim instead of the black. Also got this cool little American League patch on the side. Overall too, the fit is just a lot better. Goes to say without doing that, I'm really happy that I waited as opposed to just reinvesting and getting a second fitted. So the next one up on the list, first snapback I ever got, an original Blue Jays, was gifted to me before I even knew what hats were pretty much. One of those things, like a birthstone almost. Another original retro snapback. Pretty sure I got this with these two as well. At the same dead stock people. I don't remember for how much. Maybe 25, 30. It is retro, pretty pristine, official, genuine merchandise of the Major League Baseball Association. Green underbrim. I mean, it doesn't really get much better than that. I don't really wear this one too much. Memorabilia and nostalgia for me. I really want to retain the value as much as possible. I've worn it a couple of times. Now and then, if I'm feeling real on my ish, I might wear it. But for the most part, this is more of a closet rocker for me. 
I'm from the city of Toronto. I do have a lot of family in the city of New York. I always feel a necessity to rep, you know, New York sometimes for, for that family because I'm so close with them. I used to do trips to New York like every single year, getting into cutting hair serious. kind of fell off of it. Hecticness of my schedule, other places I had to visit because of cutting so it got a little bit harder. New York is still kind of one of those places that just really hits home for me. I really wanted to rep it. One of the things I noticed in pretty much one of my last trips, not my last trip, one of my very last trips, a trip up there to go visit some family on my own. Sports is a big thing like, like anything else. Anywhere you went you could see someone rocking a Yankees fitted or snapback but there were very specific types of brands and types of looks that people would rock and it was the all navy with the white Yankees logo. When I was out there, I made it a point to get me one of those and they were really easy to find. My family is in Jamaica, Queens. They have flea markets and, and corner stores and you can find them and, and you know they're premium, premium hats and this is the one I got right here. It's still in very pristine condition. A little dirty on the underbrim, but very nice fit. New era. This is probably the, the nicest fitting new era snapback I have. One of the best fitting snapbacks I have all together. I love it. I love this hat. You can't just get any kind of snapback. If you're gonna one, you know, fitted or one Yankee fitted or one Yankee snapback that I'm gonna wear, I want my ish to be from New York. It's one of those things, you know? And, and this was how I knew it was a New York hat because at the time, Everyone had one with, with the Yankees on the back, embroidered, stitched in. That's how you know it's the official. The last Major League Baseball hat that I got for, for this series of the collection, another pickup from a 47 brand a bulk order about a year ago. Not from there, anything like that, but I got a lot of people relevance to the city of uh, San Francisco, just the Bay Area, Northern California in general. It plays relevance more for me because of barbering. A lot of my favorite barbers come from Frisco. People in Frisco, well not just Frisco, but like all of it. People are very proud to rep Northern California, you know? One of the biggest things that, or one of the biggest ways that they have doing that is through sports teams. Especially with so many people not being from Northern California, but they live in Northern California. California is one of the best ways they can resonate towards, you know, collegiate. San Francisco Giants, Oakland. You know, Raiders, the San Francisco 49ers, Oakland Athletics. I saw this one cap and I just thought it brought everything around. Similar to the to the New York Yankees. Really like the whole all-around navy look. It really, really vibes with me. So I seen this one, the World Series, Battle of the Bay. I feel like this is such a timeless look, you know? One of those like I have to, gotta get one of those for the collection. Gray underbrim, of course. 47 brand, you already know. The last bit of the collection that we're gonna go on to, some of my locally branded, independently branded hats. They come from all kinds of individuals, but mainly from individuals that I have a, a relationship with, whether, you know, local here in the city or just in general. So the first one I'm gonna start out with, Ebby, the founder of North Side of the Map, which is a really big uh, local clothing line. This is probably one of my favorite overall regular fits pine green obviously because it's pine green i don't gotta worry about the gray the green underbrim kind of got like a dad fit to it really like the hat solid solid overall hat i love this hat overall i love this hat i love the logo it's probably one of my favorite logos he's done overall for the brand i have all kinds of hats uh from him definitely i'll uh, i'll show you some of the other uh you know series of, of from his collection and you know different styles he has and everything next one this is a one of one there's literally i don't think that unless he's made more um i don't believe there's any more of these out he literally gave me the only one that he made of this um which is kind of crazy because he doesn't even have one pretty sure it was the first time that cake and his randy came out to toronto to visit i had uh met him in barbacon new york 2016. i think later that year or the, or the next year he pretty much reached out and told me he was going to come and judge a battle we ended up hitting off and being really really good friends and one of the things he wanted to give me which i thought was really dope i had hats to sell i had this one that was like i don't even know the sailor rope on it you know which is a really cool style already the material it's made out of it's like a windbreaker kind of material 
I don't even know. It's like something out of like a windbreaker jacket, which makes it like hella, hella resilient durability wise. You know, his cake and logos on there. Shout out to cake and dude, honestly, like I thought that was one of the nicest gestures a barber's done to me, like I guess first visiting. Things like that, like goes a long, long way. You know? I don't know. I just thought that was really cool. Definitely been wearing this hat a lot. You can see it a little bit in the age of the rope and stuff, but it's still a really fire hat. Take pride in wearing it every time I do. I feel like I'm kicking when I'm wearing this, you know? Yeah. Next one up, I'm my boy uh, Twan, Dope Society. I used to work with Twan at uh, Foot Locker way like back in like high school. I think it was like my second ever job. He used to have all kinds of like clothing and merch and way way back he came out with this comic book and you look kind of he did like a like a release kind of for it. I remember when he released that I was like I messaged him I was like dude like I gotta get that, you gotta save me one, you know? He was like, yeah, no doubt. So I pulled up and I grabbed one. Like a lot of these other hats that I've shown you since getting it, I've definitely been wearing it. The colorway, it just goes with a lot of different things. Really dope, I have a, I have one of his pins on there too. Um, dope spill pins, got the flamo scissor pin on there as well. Really dope hat. <laughs> Hence why it's called dope. Love supporting uh, friends that are, are really creative, especially because you can wear it over and over and someone might see that and they might be like, dude, where'd you get that from? And then I'll tell them like, you know, my boy or something. I can just go back with them and tell them like, hey, I hope you know like that thing that you did like however many years ago, it's still getting love. Like, sometimes re-inspires people to keep recreating or keep replenishing the quantity for things like these that they may have created however long ago but there still is some sort of value in it, you know? So my last hat in my collection for this one Shout out to Justin Upgrade. This was a hat that he released at a shop called, I believe it was called In The Cut T.O. Lakeshore. I have a couple of these actually, but I'm just gonna show you this one today. Since we got the whole Navy flow going on with the Yankees and the World Series and stuff. And just to kind of show you a little compare and contrast. They all have their different shades. The World Series being the most blunt on the left, this one being the lightest. I really, really like this hat with the CN Tower and the scissors all in one, the barb of the city. You know, it's it's just wrapped in there. Put this really cool little pin on there, the TO pin, because I thought that was really sick. The really cool thing about this hat, other than I really like the fit of it, it's got this really nice genuine kind of leather strap on the back. Looks real authentic and classic. Other this is the real game changer. Ready for this? Ooh, underbrim. Yeah, that underbrim. Brim catches eyes when they see it. One of the most unique hats ever. He even he even did this really, you know, he tagged his, which I thought was really cool how he tagged his business up in there. Feel genius. The only issue that I have with this hat is I noticed if you wear it really tight or if you wear it backwards, it tends to leave a mark in your forehead, the really hard mark. A little bit of an issue, so you can't really wear it like a certain way. You gotta wear it real loose. This would be like a regular hat that I would wear for work just because a lot of people could identify straight with the fact that it had to do with barbering. So that's the first series of hat collection uh, with Crispy. I hope you enjoyed it. I have a lot more hats just to show you. Yeah, we got a lot more hats, so we can definitely do uh, more uh, collections if you guys are ever down. I've been itching to do like a hat collection YouTube video for like the longest time. I know Vic, Vic Blends, shout out Vic, uh, he recently just did one. By no means is this a bite on Vic's channel or anything like that. Shout out to Vic, I think he's doing a really dope thing. Going on a really refreshing route with it. Wasn't trying to bite it. I've been trying to actually do one of these. My boy Randy, he did a YouTube hat collection video a while ago. Recently on his podcast, also shouted out his hat collection. Felt really inspired just to kind of start my own after all these years. Maybe start doing a series on that, a little mini series on that, you know, I'd be really down. Uh
as a Super Bowl guy, as a basketball kind of guy, but I gotta admit, seeing Brady get another chip after taking a team that wasn't even in the picture in terms of like a Super Bowl and bringing them into contention, that's gotta say something right there. It was a pretty special moment, I gotta say. But yeah, guys, I think that's gonna be the end of it. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, week's vlog. Hope you're rocking with it. Once again, please comment, share, like, and subscribe. And yeah, I can't wait to do this again. Anyways, uh, until next time, stay crispy, my friends. And in St. Petersburg, we reunite.